saying mass. And you, Anna and Christopher, you were here as well, not watching TV, but praying here for our King. And we heard on that day Father Serafino's fine sermon on our Blessed Lady. He preached on that strange and seemingly distant title with which our Lord addressed her from the cross. Woman, he said. It wasn't the first time that our Lord addressed that surprising word to her. The first was at a wedding, the only wedding he's recorded to have attended, the wedding at Cana in Galilee when he turned the water into wine. We don't know the name of the couple at Cana, but that wedding, the first blessed by the presence of our Lord, was in its essentials much like yours, dear Anna and Christopher. A young couple united, and two families and groups of friends brought together. And that celebration lubricated and enhanced with so much drink that at one point it all ran out. I'm confident that given the exquisite organisation of this service, and the fact that our parish fridge is bursting with booze, and I happen to know that Le Gautique has a very good uh, bar, that that is unlikely to happen today, and miracles probably won't be called for. And it was, at, at first sight, a modest, even somewhat surprising start to a series of miracles, turning water in stone jars into the most excellent of wines. Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Eternal Father, through him all things were made, who was to restore sight to the blind, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead with a word of command, still the fury of the sea with the sound of his gentle voice, worked a humble, discreet miracle. A miracle noticed by only a handful of people, and they weren't the important ones at the wedding. They were the servants. A question of catering arrangements. A miracle intended to get a marriage off to a good start. Our Lord Jesus Christ was there, working miracles discreetly and without fuss. And he is here too, present on the altar before which Christopher and Anna have dedicated themselves to one another in lifelong love and fidelity in holy matrimony. Present in the holy mass which follows those vows as he once again works the miracle that was only foreshadowed at Cana as wine mixed with water is turned miraculously into his very self. Present also in the grace of the sacrament which begins in this church that you have made your own these last few years but which would endure as long as your marriage does. He is here too, doing what he did then. For if couples let him, our Lord will do now and from now on what he did for that couple 2,000 years ago in Cana of Galilee, through you, through you to work miracles. The same humble, discreet, but powerful miracles he worked then that are so necessary for the success of any marriage. It is his presence in grace in a Christian marriage that gives the strength the couple need to grow in love and fidelity in the face of so many trials and challenges that certainly lie ahead, indeed to mature in love, through the very obstacles they may well encounter along their way. Perhaps some of you here may think that the word miracle, an exaggeration here, although you would be too polite to say it, at least to my face. What's miraculous about two young people falling in love and staying that way? But it seems to me that in our busy, selfish, frenetic world, the sacrifices entailed by the obligations, privileges and duties of holy matrimony call for just the sort of hidden miracle of humble discretion that we find exemplified at Cana in Galilee. Unseen, but not unnoticed. 
practical but magical too, turning the dull tap water of workaday life into the wine of love, romance, and faithfulness. And Christ, as we know, works those miracles now. Many of you live and witness it, helping those who trust in him to put the other first, to give way to their beloved gracefully in the full meaning of that word with his grace, and to grow in fidelity in a season of faithlessness. He's here with you, with us, in this sacrament. And so is she. The woman at whose prayer the miracle of Cana first came about. The mediatrix of all graces, including the graces that you now have and will need in your married life. Queen of the family, spouse of the Holy Ghost. It was Mary who obtained the miracle for that couple at, at Cana. Christopher and Anna ask her prayers for you this wedding day as we Catholic Christians do. A day specially dedicated to her, a most auspicious day, the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. The miracle at Cana in Galilee, St. John tells us, was the first of the signs worked by Jesus. It's a funny word, sign. People who know more about the scriptures than I do say he probably used it because the word miracle might have sounded like magic. He says that turning the water in the, into wine was the first of the signs. A good marriage is also a sign. A sign of the power of God who is love at work in our world today. A sign that points to the power and glory of our loving Father. And a sign to of enduring human values of fidelity, dignity, affection, loyalty, and love. It's a sign, dear friends, that we all need to see whether we are single, married, widowed, separated, divorced. It's a sign <coughs> that your love gives to us this day, dear Anna and Christopher, and we bless you. Thank you for it. Christopher and Anna, it was my privilege and a daunting one as I received and blessed your vows to put into words the silent prayer of all seated here behind you today. And I can assure you, even after this long sermon, they're still here with us. That the love and trust that you have proclaimed in one another this day. In the sight of God and of this congregation made up of your family and friends. That the love which unites you now as man and wife will grow and deepen through many, many happy years together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 